So we're, here we have the one and only King of Sierra on this episode, New Jersey CCW. We welcome him back to the platform. It's been over a year, I would say. And, you know, we are blessed to have him because he's not only an expert in firearms, and he's always helped us on the, on the platform here. He's also an investigator, firearms expert, comedian, movie star. <laughs> Boy, we're lucky to have him. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so Welcome, much. But this has been so much fun. I love coming to your show. It's awesome. It's great. And, and we and we we are super blessed to have you. Now, bring us up a little bit up to speed because it, it's been a while uh, that you've been on the show, and there's some exciting news over in your end of the world. Oh yes, let everybody know. Yes, um, finally, July of 2022. New Jersey civilians now were able to apply for concealed carry permits, which was, I never thought I would ever see that in my lifetime. (laughs) Seriously. I was like, this is fantastic. I was elated. So uh, it was, it's been a great journey. It's it's wonderful. It's great. You know, now a lot of us, especially down South are saying, did he say CCW? They just got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How give us a little background on, what in the world happened over in New Jersey? Well, it all stemmed from the Supreme Court decision from New York State back in 2022. Um, and um, all of a sudden, when they, the, the Supreme Court uh, shot down the, the New York laws that were so oppressive and draconian, that immediately affected New Jersey. Here, as instructors, wow. we thought that we were going to have time to, to, for that the ripple effect. Literally, it was within weeks that all of a sudden, I was, it was great. It was great. At first, it was a learning curve um, because there was no guidance, you know, what to do it from the instructor point of view. Because they did, the, right. uh, the uh, state police, no, the attorney general's office provided an authorized course of fire. They didn't pro- uh, provide an authorized curriculum. So luckily, <clears throat> I was able to figure it out because um, initially, because I've been doing this for so long, Right. And I kind of deduced what they were going to need. And, uh, for example, when it first started, I kind of ha- I had a guess. This is, okay, they're probably going to want a use of force class. They're probably going to want some type of nomenclature and familiarization class. And what I decided to do was for the course of fire, and mind you, nothing was codified at this point. Okay. I said, okay, right. well, let me choose a pre-approved state course of fire that I use for my retired police officers called the handgun qualification course on HQC2, which is a 50-round course. So I decided to use that, and I made up my own form. So Hmm. fast forward. This is funny. July of 2023, when all the lawsuits, you know, were, and all the, uh, the the, um, the court proceedings, you know, kind of settled down a little bit, when New Jersey finally codified the rules and regulations of what was necessary, guess what they wanted? A use of force class, a nomenclature class. There you go. The, and they cop, they cop, the form they use now was almost verbatim like mine. It looks exactly... Great mind sneak alike. Like, yeah, really? And then, and guess what course of fire they chose? The HQC2. The exact one that I used. Wow. I, I, I hit the Excellent. Part. So the, what, the good thing, the reason why I was so happy about that was because, um, mind you, in, in that... In that year span from July 2022 to July 2023, there were instructors that were doing slightly different things because we had no guidance. Right. We had no guidance, mm. okay? But when the laws were codified in July of 2023, none of my students had to come back because I did what they wanted from Jump Street. Exactly. So Excellent. I was lucky. Yes. Yeah, Excellent. Great. And you were right on the mark because why reinvent the wheel? Exactly. It was a state pre-approved state, but they've changed the course of fire since then. Um, so September 15th of 2023, it's still a 50-round course, but they changed the yardages. So that wasn't much of a change. Yeah. So, But luckily, I right. was lucky. I was like, wow. I, I was very fortunate. Yeah. And, and the yardage really, in the overall scheme, doesn't mean right. anything. Right. It's, it's now the, from the 3 to the 15-yard line. So that's what now. Uh, just to backtrack a little bit, when you said you so forth, you're talking about a classroom instructor, correct? Right, because uh, for right. New Jersey, okay. yes, exactly. Okay, now 
So you can carry, uh, you have a permit to carry. You have to take the course. Right. What other uh, requirements does a citizen yeah, so need to have? So you have a mental health evaluation, like most other states. Uh, you go online, you print out the paperwork, you have a number of references, you fill out all the paperwork. So you come to an instructor like me, uh, you have to get the document notarized that you qualified with the, cor- with the course of fire that's required, that you had use of force that's required. Then you take that document, you go online, you scan it, and you just uh, go on their website, the state police website, to just download everything and type in everything you need. And you, um, I forget how much they pay now, but it takes about 30 to 60 days for most civilians to get their permit online. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's how long it takes. Yeah, we in Florida, we had permits uh, back in 89, I think. That's when they started. Oh, wow. And we just did away with our permit system. You don't need it. Really? It's a cat. Yeah, we're a constitutional carry state. So as long as you have identification, you can carry a That's gun. That's great. I, I, you know, some people that have it are going to continue using it because if I want to purchase a gun, I don't have to do the three-day waiting period. Okay. I get the gun right there. But if you don't have it, then you're going to wait the three days. You know, the cooling off period, they call. So... For us down here, it's a little strange. It's a little ancient history we're listening to. So <laughs> oh, yeah. We have to catch of course. up. <laughs> like, wow. But it makes life a lot easier now for Jersey residents for two reasons. A, more and more states are acknowledging New Jersey uh, residential carry permits. And B, now it makes it easy for New Jersey residents who have a carrying permit to get non-residential carry permits in certain states that require a pre-existing right. residential carry permit. So it's it's opened the doors for us amazingly. Tremendously, oh, yeah. Man. Now, you said something about mental health. Expand a little bit about that. We don't have that here. Really? Down in yeah, it's a form you fill out to allow um, uh, an investigation on, any, uh, on your current mental health status to see if you've been institutionalized if you are seeing a psychologist a psychiatrist it actually authorizes the state to investigate your uh your 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 status regarding your medical status regarding mental health so so okay you have to do that every time um you uh, you you renew also okay and renewal is what every couple of years two years two years Mm -hmm. wow uh, uh, here in Florida, it's six years. Oh, is it? Wow. So great. you renew every six. That's wonderful. Yeah. And again, well, you don't need it anymore. I mean, I encourage Floridians to keep it because it allows us to go to, uh, I believe it, it's uh, 30-something states, 32 something states. Something like that, yeah. I might be wrong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah something like yeah. that. With you know, it's so if you want to carry in another state, Mm-hmm. It's it's a good oh, idea. Definitely. definitely. So to, to keep it going. So that's exciting news. And we're very happy for you. Now, I'm assuming citizens are buying and getting ready for their permit classes. Oh yes. Would I be right? Oh now? goodness. I, I teach them at least twice or three times a month. And and that's just by word of mouth. So I'm going to start advertising more. Oh, it's it's great, it's great because um people really really want and they want to know also because unfortunately like there's certain nuances like for example little nuances that are not obvious like in New Jersey you cannot carry hollow point ammunition. Right, I remember that fiasco. Yeah, I know. Retired officers finally can, (laughs) but civilians cannot. That's number one. Number two. The places where you can and cannot carry, that changes like the stock market. Wow. Literally every other week, there's court cases. You can carry here. You can't carry there. You can carry here. But no, no, not anymore. And it's incumbent on the individual to log on to certain websites to see what the latest laws are. Uh, right. Um, Making it difficult uh, for the Second Amendment as usual. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like, right. like uh, Shall not infringe. They just can't get it. <laughs> exactly. They just can't get it. Like, for example. So yeah. here in Florida, yeah. even if a business has a sign that says no firearms, it's a suggestion. <laughs> because it, it, it holds no legal barrier. Really? Now, of course, if let's say you're going to McDonald's mm-hmm. 
and the manager sees that you're carrying, they can tell you to leave. You would have to leave, right? Or disarm and come back. Okay. So you can you know, so you have they call the police. That's what I'm going to tell you. Well, you can't be in here with a gun because it's private property. Right. Okay. You got to go. Okay. But it's still the little sign on the door, you know, like a lot of my firearms friends used to say, you know, the, the silhouette was always of a Beretta. And they would go, no, it's not me. I don't have a Beretta. <laughs> <laughs> Walk in. So that's great. It's just crazy how two states are so, so different. Oh, a, a tremendous. You know, now here you you can't walk into a federal building, obviously, federal Same property, here. right? Stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. You know, so that that's a that's a, a, a give me. But everything else is fair game. How about um? You can take in like in Jersey, for example, you cannot carry at a, at an establishment that sells alcohol. Correct. Yeah, here. You shouldn't be armed and shouldn't be drinking. So here's the fine line, too. So I can go to a restaurant that has alcohol. I can be carrying, but I'm not drinking. Right, 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 right. So, you know, it's a fair fair line. Now, you can't drink. I don't yeah, drink. Right, but you can't drink. Yeah, I don't with drink. A, with, a, with a gun on, you cannot drink either. So, Correct. And I tell everybody, if you're going to be a carry, conceal, Second Amendment holder and carrying all the time, you shouldn't you know, forget oh, alcohol. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Because the first time you pull that gun out, use it, and you come up with a little bit of alcohol content, they're coming oh, after most you. Most definitely. You were impaired. They're going to take everything you yep. own. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's and, and you just can't. They don't go together. Never do. Never do. I've seen so many cases. Never do. Oh yeah, because your 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 muscle memory shot, and also your 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 judgment is is a hampered. You know, and then yeah. an attorney's going to yeah. know that. The defense attorney's going to and, and forget it. It's it's going to be a mess, a legal mess. Absolutely. Yeah. Now here in Florida, we use the um, the ATF form. Now when you buy a gun, and, and you use the ATF form, it says, "Do you suffer from mental illness?" And you check on it. So if you come to Florida to get trained, there is no standard here either of training. You, I mean, they're only going to teach you the statute. Right. And it says that the student must show proficiency. What does that mean? Right. Yeah. Exactly. One round, 20 rounds. Wow. Okay. Cycle around. <laughs> yeah. You know. Exactly. So, you know, this is the okay corral. <laughs> But uh, sometimes you wonder, you know, how much do they, they need? I believe they need training. But sometimes you can't make it too difficult. A lot of uh, new gun owners are very scared of guns. So I think they do need a, a class, but nothing to scare the pants out right. of them. Okay, now we got to draw blood. <laughs> yeah. Then we're going to do a rectal exam. <laughs> and, <laughs> gonna take a mirror. And it's, yeah. You're like, okay, look. Right, I, I pass, I pass. So, I'll stay with a slingshot, yeah. you know, so. But I'm glad that New Jersey has finally gotten over some of the craziness. Yeah, but what I do tell... It's been, yeah, it's it's been, been a Oh, my God, it's been, it's, been tough. it's been tough. But one of the things I always tell my students, though, um, is especially those that are new to carrying, I said, look, you have to understand one major thing, okay? So it's great that we have the permits to carry. We're authorized to carry to, and, and call a qualify. That's fine. But remember, for those that are new, this is only the beginning. Okay? It's incumbent on you to seek training and more training and more training because it's a different ball game shooting from the holster than it is at an in, enclosed gun range. Yeah. Right. You know, and that Exactly. You know, there's a lot of training and a lot of responsibility to carry. I mean, just taking the weapon out of the holster for some people that never done it is very difficult. Oh, very. Sure, they, they've never, they're not used to it because he, I don't know about Florida, but in New Jersey, there's a lot of ranges that will not let you draw from the holster. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Down here. Oh, really? Thing. Yeah. So it's, that's incumbent on yeah. them to find, you know, like myself, I have access to certain ranges in which, you know, once they know they're with me, then they know that I'm teaching a holster ca a class and they allow it, but that makes it that much harder for those individuals to practice on their own. They could do a dry fire, but it's, dry fire, you know, yeah. but it's, 
which is safe, clear, empty, yeah. no rounds in the room, no rounds in the gun. Some people want to <laughs> they understand dry fire as okay. Yeah. <laughs> Click. It didn't go off. That one I do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we got to we got to slowly explain things. Mm -hmm. But um, so give us a little bit of uh, a background as far as uh, how does a, a regular citizen in New Jersey, you said they contact an instructor. Does it have to be a um, certified instructor? Yes. In New Jersey, it ha at the bare minimum, you have to be an NRA certified instructor. Uh, okay. Then, um, then, so because what happens is that, uh, and this started happening, happening early on, where when the students would submit the paperwork, they also had to submit the instructor's, uh, instructor's credentials. Credentials, yeah. Right. So then I'm, you know. Yeah, here it was a little bit the same thing, but. It was NRA, UCCA. Uh, I was allowed because I was a police firearms instructor. So our certification was still, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, you know, if too. you were former military. Yeah. If you were former military, same thing. Oh, that's good. They, Yeah, they, they allowed you to become an instructor. So you didn't need that formal, you know, formal instructor. Mm -hmm. But you need, you know, you had to know firearms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You couldn't walk into a range, and, you know. They had their own range masters and stuff, and they're like, "Really? What are you doing?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can spot them a mile away. Oh, you know? of course, absolutely. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. We have all the videos too that we can prove it. <laughs> right, right. They right. say they're instructors, and they're really not instructors. Oh my God, you know? God, yes, I know. They're out there. Mm -hmm. Now you're still teaching a bunch of evolutions of firearms. Let the audience know what you. What you currently teach? Oh, um, I teach NRA classes of the basic pistol, rifle, shotgun, uh, in, a personal protection in the home, outside the home, and the refuse to be a victim seminars. And I also certify range safety officers and chief range safety officers. So I do the okay. NRA stuff that way. I also certify new NRA instructors because I'm a training counselor. So in any discipline that I teach, I can make new instructors in. I do that too. Correct. So, uh, and I'm also an NRA law enforcement instructor. Uh, so, uh, I'm actually going to be teaching at ILFE this September uh, in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida again. Yeah, West Palm Beach. Boom! We do it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, when when are you coming Third down? Week of September. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got to make a note of that. I'm I'm going to come down to All see. All right, you. cool. Yeah, West Palm Beach. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll be teaching Third law week. enforcement instructors there. Okay, and then and come down and cool. see. You. And then on um, my other non NRA uh, stuff, I do home defense, uh, urban rifle, urban shotgun, home defense shotgun, things like that. Uh, moving and shooting um, transition drills, and the real fun one. Uh, for we have a, a teacher, the buddy of mine, Ryan. We call we do something called the practical shooting series, in which we introduce people in different stages and different levels, transitioning from rifle to handgun, shotgun to handgun. Excellent. Going behind barricades, but the cool one practical is one, two, three, and four. Number four, they take what they learn in one, two, and three, and we go to a shoot house and use airsoft to shoot at each other. Oh, that's fun. That's all. Oh, that, oh, that's fun. That's great. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. So if you're listening for the first time and you're thinking about, I need a gun class, and I, that's a fun class. It really shows you your skill. Thank you. As soon as you get hit with the paintball. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Cause, it's an eye opener. Yeah, because it's amazing, especially um, the, as you know, the Tula drill. So let me explain that. The 21 foot drill is the one, one of my favorite ones to do with that airsoft because it's the first time in which, you know, it takes 21 feet for most individuals in life to come at you to see, and you have to see whether or not you're, you're fast enough to holster the firearm and respond. You have to uh, modify it at a, obviously at a live range, but with airsoft as an instructor, I can run right at them. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And then they fumble. That's they, fun. They, they fumble with the holster, and that's when they realize when their holsters are good and where they're not, and they realize how they'll right. kind of miss real close. And if they stand still, right. instead of moving, I'm going to stab them with with a fake knife that I have. Yeah, so that's an eye opener. It's one of my favorite things to do with that the drill when it comes to their force on force. With airsoft, is that one? Now, I will tell people that are listening, 
if you think it's like a little game, <laughs> your adrenaline will be through the roof, your blood pressure through the Absolutely. roof. Absolutely. I mean, you're really into it mm -hmm. because even though you, you know, you're not going to die, you don't want to simulate that. You know, the pain dripping off your front of your yeah, mask. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you yeah. Know? Or also with role playing, for example, um, like when I when I did an active shooter scenario. OK, I would have actors on the floor with fake theater blood and screaming to simulate oh. the environment. Oh. Just to walk, even just walking through it freaks people out because they're not used to seeing that. You got to love this guy. You got to <laughs> love this guy. The fear and the acting comes in. That is a great idea, though. It, it, that's that's a great how idea. people learn. I mean, it, it all depends on uh, like domestic, like for, for cops and parole officers, a domestic violence scenario. Um, for security personnel or people that are guards, uh, the suicide potential scenario. Uh, I, I'd be right. the actor who wants to commit suicide. And let me give you this quick synopsis of that one. Okay. So I okay. would take the actor's role because I knew the, the response I wanted to solicit. Okay. So uh, I pretended to be the suicide person with a, with a mask and everything. And I would have two, uh, at the time, parole officers in the scenario. Um, trying to react to the situation so if they did the right thing i'd let them live <laughs> if, they, if they made a mistake <laughs> i killed <laughs> them both uh, yeah that's it so <laughs> they and and, uh, and not just parole i mean police i, I trained security personnel but you'd be surprised how many of the role players how many of, of the participants seeing me want to kill myself in the scenario me screaming all these things were walking towards me without their guns drawn. It's okay. Ooh. It's okay, man. Put the guns. So I'm baiting them. Ooh. I'm baiting them. No, no, I want to die. As soon as they got close, bam, bam. I shoot them both. Dead. I'd be like, okay, take your helmets yeah. off. Why are you dead? Why are you dead right now? Right. And I would tell them right. distance equals time. You know, uh, something yeah. like that. You walk away, scream from the corner if they want to help, fine. But, you know, that's that's how you they learn. To put him in that immersive, yeah. that sim simulated environment. You right. Know? Now, for the old law enforcement guys that are listening, and they have to be negative Nancys, he's talking about civilians in new into guns. Okay. Right, right, right. <laughs> because, right. Exactly. Yeah, they're like, who's going to do that? Who's there, there's a lot of people that are going to mm -hmm. do that. Sure, sure. And they don't know. They, they just don't right. know. That's why I start with simple scenarios or just drills. And then they'll come back for more so there is they're more applicable to whatever either civilian law enforcement security probation parole you know it's it's all tailored to i do the scenarios tailored to whomever my, my target audience is you know right you know, so for civilians now you've been an nra you've been an nra instructor a certified instructor for over 20 years correct? actually look at that they see so mm -hmm. i mean that's quality right Thank right you. there as well and in one of your courses, I know you were teaching a while back that it's very interesting, point shooting. You're yes, still doing yes, actually, yes. Um, my master instructor taught me, Matthew Temkin. He's, a, a, he's a, like the guru, a, one, of the, one of the gurus of point shooting, and he's trained me. I, I, I was under his tutelage. He's a phenomenal instructor. And what yeah. that involves is, and I think it's extremely realistic, is, are scenarios yeah. in which you're talking about five yards and in, where you have no time to look at sites where it's like the concept that we like to use is, okay, well, you've thrown a baseball your whole life or a ball as a child to someone's hands. Well, you can do that same thing with a gun. When, when right. instinctive, it's instinctive shooting, they call it, point shooting. And I do that. And it's been very, very successful. And people really enjoy it. Re the reason why people appreciate it, because A, it's realistic. It's probably what's going to happen. If it, if yeah. probably, like three, three shots, three yards, three seconds. It's probably what's going to happen. It's quick. Um, and it's actually not that difficult to learn because it's instinctive. You, you actually, you're, yeah. you're, you're following your body's instinct, the point, you, just the pointing. It's the same thing. And it, people really enjoy yeah. it. And they, they're happy when they realize, wow, I can actually hit it when it's that close. I can hit it without looking at my sight. So it's a fun class to teach yeah. too. It's very practical. It is practical. And uh, I know it should have a lot of interest. Very realistic, like you said, three shots, three three yards is uh, mm -hmm. the the standard in data. So that data goes back to 1970. Amazing, right? 
how, how certain things don't change. Like you could change, don't change. from revolvers to semi-autos to 90 millimeter to 38 special, but encounters are similar. Right. And I think that's important to tell the average uh, citizen that doesn't know too much about weaponry. They might think that well, you, you have to be a marksman. You have to shoot from 30 and 40 yards away. No, they, they're this close combat fighting. I mean, you know, a mugger is not going to mug you 50 yards away. Exactly. Well, Let me get your wallet. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's, okay, hold on. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> up close and personal. So, yeah. up, close and up, personal. Close, up close and personal, you got to be fast. ready. Uh, yeah. So what the, do you have classes lined I, up for CCW coming I do. up? I do. Um, I have a class lined up on Saturday, June 29th, and then the pro the next Sunday, July 6th. Those are my newer classes. I have classes for the remainder of the summer, but those are my two ones that are coming up now. Coming up, and people can still jump on? Oh, sure. Absolutely. The class is opening? Absolutely. All right, June 29th and July mm -hmm. 6th. Mm -hmm. And so how do they contact you? They can either email me. Uh, SepulvaInc.com is, is my um, website, and my e they can either contact me through there, and that also have my phone number. They can text me. Uh, okay. And either way. And the information is always going to be down in our show notes. From wherever you get your podcast, you look at the show notes, and his information will be there. We always post it on there. I appreciate there. that. I appreciate that. Um, how much uh, would people be looking for? Because, you know, people are like, I'm not going to call, but he didn't say the amount it might oh, be. It's, uh, for the CCW, I only charge $200 per student. Okay. Yep. So, again, you, you get a broad view, and I'm telling you, this is an, an expert instructor. You're not just getting anybody. Thank you. Because, unfortunately, like in any industry, there's a bunch of anybody's out there, and then there's professionals. So, Karis also did it in the law enforcement realm, and he's also doing it now in the civilian world. And uh, you're getting excellent training if you if you uh, contact him. And then I encourage to continue taking courses. Very important. Yeah. It's, it's because good. what's your favorite line, my friend? Your favorite line? Perpetual student. Perpetual student. student. Uh, yep. And and like when, when, I, when I'm training in September, I'm training one class. However, I'm attending training the remainder of the week. There you go. Because I, I learned yeah. so much from... Uh, from different people throughout the world that go there, law enforcement instructors, we teach each other, yeah. and, and it's I yeah. learned so much. It's it's awesome. It's an awesome experience. Yeah, and, uh, it is an awesome experience, and, and that's his that's his key. I I, I stole that from him, so I got to pay him royalties every time I use it. The perpetual yep. student, and you cannot be an instructor without being that perpetual student. The instructors are learning to, and they're learning from their students. The students are learning Absolutely. from the instructor. Absolutely. Yeah, you have so, to keep on learning because things change, especially in this business. Things change. Laws yeah. change. Techniques change. Tactics change. And you need to keep up with what's going on and what's effective, what's not effective. I mean, look. How, right. for example, look how many times, and you know this uh, very well, look how many times the tactics of active shooter responses have changed. Yeah. Uh, from Columbine to it's now. Constantly. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's constantly right. changing. Every every incident is a right. different, okay, now we're going to do right. this. It's a learning it curve. It happens, right. So it's always yeah. a learning curve. Yeah, exactly. Now, the ammunition that they're using in, uh, you said they can't use hollow points. They can't carry hollow points. In New Jersey, it's weird. But they can't carry. Right. Okay. You, can, you can have hollow points for home defense in New Jersey, or you can shoot hollow points at a range, but as a concealed carry holder, you cannot carry them. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. At least you can have it in your yes. home. Yes. Because, you know, hollow points is where it's at, but it can't, you can't break the law either. Right. You got to follow the law. But, but I, I do like so, the critical defense, too. That's that's what we get, we're allowed to carry, and that's actually a great round. So. Yes. Yes, it yeah. is. I, I, I have some of those myself. They're great. And, and um, how's, how's uh, with the... Uh, AR-15s and everything else? The, uh, can you yes, have can. it? Yes, um, 10-round mag only. You know, uh, um, how, uh, and that's for pistol, too? What's that? 
The pistol, too, yeah. Oh, p- yes, that, the, the pistol, pistol, correct. But yeah, we are, ARs are still legal in New Jersey, luckily. Uh, we have no issues with that. Uh, just cannot have the two th- evil things they cannot have is uh, an expanding buttstock. So it has to be pinned. Oh my gosh. Because <laughs> that matters, right? <laughs> that matters. So that has to be pinned. So literally what happens is, let's say they ship an AR to Jersey, go to the dealer with an expanding stock. You measure it first to you, then they can pin it. I mean, they wow. don't have to do it that way, but that's what makes more sense to do it that way. For some, a big guy like me, I typically need the fullest extension, you know, or someone small. Right, of course. And then the evil bayonet lug, that cannot be there either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, it's silly, it's funny, and it's, it's sad. It's crazy. What does that matter? It, I mean, is. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. You know, it's like, oh, Oh, whatever. my God. But at least it's legal still, so I'm like, I'm happy. It, it is legal, and, and and you can train on it, teach it. Education is that's paramount. That's my, uh, my biggest, uh, my clientele base, that's the the most common rifle that brings an AR platform uh, for the most part. Right. It's the most common. I teach tactical, urban, you know, I mean, tactical shooting, uh, transition shooting, and literally the transition. 90% of my clients have ARs, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, transporting a tra- uh, AR in New the Jersey? The rifle has to be in a, in a lock, uh, in a in closed case, and the uh, empty magazines, and then the ammunition has to be separate, uh, out of reach. So out of reach. Okay. That's, that, that's how it works. Okay. I mean, I, I don't like it, but at the same time, I understand. Yeah. It's every you know, so different. You know, at least yeah. you can carry it. Right, right, right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mission carry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So we've got these two courses coming up June 29th, July 6th. If you're interested, the information for Jarvis is going to be down on the bottom of our show notes. We definitely want to have you back on a whole array of new shows that we're going to be doing. I'd love to come. And, uh, love, love, love talking to you. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've done a lot of podcasting in the past. Yes. A lot of education, and like the new listeners that are listening, you go to RaiderCopTacTAC.com, and there's a section there that says podcast. Scroll all the way down, you'll see all the uh, firearms videos, and there's a lot there with Karis. And uh, he's spitting out his knowledge, and we're very appreciative of that. Thank you. Any uh, closing remarks? Um, just uh, like everything else, uh, like I've said before, you have to be a perpetual student. You're never too young or too old to learn anything. Uh, everyone be safe and uh, protect your rights to own for firearms ownership because it's always, it's always under fire, you know, so be, be, be active in that. Uh, but yeah. seek training, knowledge and training because things change all the time. Not just products and gun brands and ammo, but tactics, techniques, uh, thinking outside the box. These, these are things that are, are, are decision-making. You know, uh, those are things that you always have to keep in mind to train because life is not an enclosed range. Yeah. You know, so yeah. seek training, concentrate. Yeah. Most, most definitely. And um, you're going to keep us posted in any other new courses or classes that you have. Absolutely. We'll be more than happy to let people know Thank out you. there. I appreciate that. Thanks a lot. I hope to see you in September, third week of September. I'll go down to the Palm Beach and see. Oh, please. That'll be great. And... Uh, we could broadcast yeah, something from I, there. I, <laughs> you know, we could talk. Yeah, we great. Right. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and we encourage people, give them the plug of your website again. Uh, my website's www.sepulvedainc.com. Okay. Yeah, it's the same yeah, one. Same one. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's the same one. So it's down on the yes. bottom of the show yep. notes. Mm-hmm. Well, we thank you, Profusia, to come out here. We are blessed to have mm-hmm. you. And we can't wait to have you again. And I'm blessed to be here, and and thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right.